How's it going everybody? Welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH after show. Before we get into it, I have to nerd out for a bit. General Hospital is getting a brand new set and it's a swimming pool at the Metro Court with actual water in it. It looks so freaking dope. I swear to God, ABC must be giving GH like a bigger budget because we've been getting a lot of new sets lately and some outdoor location shoots lately, so I'm here for it. Totally here for it. All right, now let's get into it. We might as well start off with Nicholas and Ava's stalker, Spencer Cassidine, to hopefully no one's surprise at this point. As you guys remember, Trina showed up to her graduation covered in fake blood. It turns out that Spencer put some fake blood in the sprinkler systems at the art gallery and that's what splashed Trina. It ruined all of the art in the art gallery. Trina actually tried to chase the intruder but she didn't catch up to him but she runs into him later at the Savoy and of course she doesn't recognize him. Spencer actually wanted to check up on Trina after she got cleaned up and introduced himself as Victor when they were in the back hallways of the Savoy. He was actually really nice to her and even convinced her to stay at the party even though she really wanted to leave and when she walked walks away, he checks out her ass. They actually run into each other a few times throughout the week, and the one thing I'm noticing about Spencer this time round is that they've made him a dirty dog. Trina ran into him on the 4th of July at the docks, and he was sunbathing, and he's like, let's sunbathe together in our birthday suits, and I'm just like, oh god, you know, I'm so used to young Spencer that even though he was like a pompous to girls, back then. This time it's sexual and it's really throwing me. I'm just watching like, young man, you are a child, but not so much anymore. They didn't sunbathe together, but they did end up at the park together. But once Spencer realized that she was actually friends with Joss and Cameron, he couldn't get out of there fast enough. I guess he's not quite ready to be seen by anyone he knows yet. Speaking of Cameron and Jocelyn, they are trying to figure out what happens next between them. They actually admitted that they had feelings for each other after that kiss at the Savoy, and they talked about their past and how Cameron and Joss had feelings back then, but because of Oscar, they were reluctant to admit it to each other. Now they're a bit more cool with it, which is fine because it has actually been a couple years since Oscar passed now. I do like that this potential relationship has given Cameron a bit more confidence, that's what I'm noticing so I'm kind of here for it. Y'all know that I liked Cameron and Trina better, but I'm willing to see how this plays out with Cameron and Joss. Going back to Trina for a second, she actually runs into Spencer a few days later at the park again, and the two of them take a little bit of time to get to know each other. They do realize that they have some things in common, like their love of art. That conversation does get interrupted because Trina's mom, Portia, shows up and sees them together, and Portia was acting like any mom would at this point. She's like trying to fish him out and being like, so, you know, do you want to come to dinner with us? Trina, of course, is embarrassed. Spencer ends up leaving because he has other plans, and Trina's just like, mom? And Portia's like, hey, you know, he's hot, and she just seems so traumatized. Trina does tell Portia that he's nice, and then she actually brings up that he works at the Savoy for Curtis, and if Curtis trusts him, then I guess that I should. So if Portia actually brings up to Curtis this worker at the Savoy and realizes that he doesn't actually work there, alarm bells are gonna go off. What do you guys think of Trina and Spencer so far? Let me know in the comments below. Now Curtis is trying my patience this week. He had the audacity to go and run to Jordan and get mad at her for not signing the divorce papers yet, as if the last few months hasn't been chaotic as hell for her. And listen, I get that it takes a few seconds to sign a piece of paper and throw it in the mail, but Jordan and Curtis, they really loved each other. It's not like a nasty divorce or anything. It's an emotional situation for her, and it kind of reminds me of when Luke and Laura got their divorce and how emotional it was for them. It's like, they get that the damage is done and that the divorce is probably for the best, but it doesn't negate all the love that they felt for each other. I feel like she does need a bit of time to just be able to sit down and just process her relationship while kind of having the papers in front of her and then getting the courage to sign it. Now I do think that part of the reason why Curtis was so angry and impatient is because he knows that someone pushed Portia away from him and he might have thought that Jordan was a possibility. At one point he actually thought that it might be Taggart that pushed Portia away from him but Nina had talked to Taggart on the night of the graduation party and she says that he was trying to flirt with her and that he talked about the fact that they were like amicable exes so he doesn't really want to be with her. What I am surprised about is that Curtis didn't automatically jump to Stella being a possibility. Like to me that would have been my first guess and he does eventually find out and reams her out for it. Here's the thing, I really do think that Stella should butt out because they are grown ass adults and they should be able to figure things out for themselves. But at the same time, I feel 
like Stella was speaking a little bit of truth to Portia. She does say, I know that you and Portia on paper look like you'd be a much easier couple than you and Jordan. However, eventually you're going to learn that Portia is just as human as anyone else and she too would have her own secrets that she might be keeping from you. Not that I think that Stella knows anything, but it's clearly foreshadowing. Y'all know since Portia arrived that I had no doubt in my mind that her daughter Trina is definitely Curtis's daughter as well and that she's hiding it from him. Cause that's a much bigger secret than anything Jordan has kept from him. His own child, y'all. All right, let's continue down the same family lines and talk about the going ons between Sean, Alexis, TJ, and Molly. Sean had called Molly and TJ over to Pentonville to let them know that Alexis was in solitary. He does ask to have a minute alone with Molly and when TJ leaves the room, he fills her in on the fact that he thinks that Judge Carson is the reason why Alexis is in solitary. He tells her that Alexis had been looking into some of Judge Carson's past cases and notice that there is racial bias that seems to be going on in some of the cases. He believes that someone in Pentonville may have gotten wind on Alexis's research and it got back to Judge Carson and that she's the reason why Alexis is now in solitary. He warns Molly to stay away from Judge Carson and of course it's Molly so that lit a fire under her ass and y'all know she wasn't going to stay away from Judge Carson. Obviously Molly did the exact opposite and met up with Judge Carson at the Metro Court and even confronted her on the racial bias in some of her court cases. Martin actually sees this argument and steps in and actually defends Judge Carson and shoes Molly away. And then the two of them have a conversation that's a little bit incriminating. Judge Carson is sitting there heated and being like, you know, I had a black roommate once. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. Here we go. Furthermore, she actually says that she believes that certain people in a certain community should be treated with a bit more hostility and unfairness because, and I quote, not completely correctly, but I quote, she says certain people would respond better to actual longer incarcerations. Martin actually agreed with her and at that point I was so mad. I was ready to throw things at my TV. I was like, how could you make Martin a racist? But then in a shocking turn of events, it turns out that Molly and Martin were actually working together and he recorded that conversation. Not only was it enough to actually open an investigation against Judge Carson, but it was also enough to have Sean and Alexis end up in police protective custody and out of Pentonville. And not a moment too soon because Alexis was about to crack in solitary. She was actually having conversations with herself side to side and her osteoporosis was actually acting up as well. When they were brought back to the PCPD, there was a really special moment where TJ and Sean got to hug, which is actually like a really big moment when you think about it because he didn't find out that Sean was his father until after Sean was already in jail. Like this is the first time they're getting to hug since then. I was actually a little bit emotional watching it, not gonna lie. My one problem with the storyline, and I've already mentioned it before, is that there is a strong possibility that Nicholas had to do with Sean not getting parole. So it's it's like, it's, it's, on, it's a good story if it was really only just Judge Carson being, a, you know, racially biased, but like the Nicholas factor, it kind of makes me worried. Until we know for sure, I'm gonna hold judgment on the storyline as a whole. All right, now let's talk about the fallout of everyone finding out that Jason and Carly are getting married and all the chaos that it brought to the show this week and all the emotions that stirred up within me. So many different emotions. Sam and Elizabeth find out about the nuptials after overhearing Michael talking about Jason and Carly getting married to Willow at Chase's surprise party in Charlie's, which I don't even want to get into. I mean, Chase being lied to by Michael and Willow is just, it's irritating and it's more of the same, so there's no point in talking about it. Sam bolts out the door and Elizabeth chases after her and watches out for her. It's actually so sweet. Like, you guys know that I like both Sam and Elizabeth. I am a diehard J-Sam fan. I wasn't a fan of Liaison, but I respected Elizabeth as a character and I respect Sam as a character. So getting to see these two bond was kind of cute. I actually really liked it. Elizabeth was actually being a really good friend to Sam. I mean, she bought her vodka at the liquor store. She drank it with her. She didn't want her to be alone. And then she convinces Sam to go to her apartment and find things that remind her of her and Jason's relationship. And Sam brings a leather jacket. She brings some unused Springsteen tickets and she even brings dominoes and tequila. Elizabeth then sets fire to the trash can and Sam throws it all in there, but it wasn't burning bright until Sam actually took a swig of the tequila and tossed the tequila into the trash can, which obviously the fire department and the police department have to get called and Dante and Finn shows up 
to see what's going on because they realize that it was probably Sam and Elizabeth. Sam and Dante get into a little bit of an argument and it results in both of them falling into the pier. They were on the docks, by the way. They fall into the pier and get soaked. Once Dante realized why Sam was acting this way, he actually feels bad for her and takes her to get coffee at Charlie's. They leave and it's still the 4th of July and they see the fireworks and they end up sharing a kiss that Sam runs away from. I know there are a lot of people that don't like the idea of Dante and Sam because of the amount of siblings that they share together. That part has never really bothered me so much, but I just feel like Kelly Monaco is just not bringing it to the show lately. I don't know what it is. Like, I actually really want to enjoy Dante and Sam so bad, but it, like her performance is actually affecting my enjoyment of the, the potential couple that they are. Watching them actually just makes me really uncomfortable, and there are other reasons that I'm not enjoying Sam and Dante, especially Sam lately, that I won't get into, just out of respect and love that I've had for Kelly and Sam for as many years that I did, but I, I just... Oh, it makes me so sad to just not be able to enjoy them. But having said that, the main reason is that she used to have chemistry with pretty much anyone she acted with, and now it's just none of it's there anymore. She just doesn't seem happy on the show. I don't know anything about her personal life, but it's like there's just something really off right now. Now, as for Finn and Elizabeth, they stayed behind on the docks to watch the fireworks, and Finn actually admits to Elizabeth that he has feelings for her. Unfortunately for him, she fell asleep on his shoulder before he actually got the words out, so there's that. I swear to god I've seen this scene before though. Not for them, for someone else. Now we can't talk about Jason and Carly getting married without mentioning Britt and Jax. The two of them run into each other at a bar, get drunk, and hook up. And by the way, fun fact, the bartender that actually called last call before they left was actually the actress that plays Willow's real life boyfriend. Crazy. But yeah, so they hook up and then the next day they run into Jason and Carly at the Metro Court and Carly gets Jax alone to talk to him about it. Now I'm not really a fan of Jax, but he did spill some truth to Carly. Carly tells Jax that she is marrying Jason because it's what's best for her family and Jax is sitting there like, I know that you probably believe that and it's a damn shame. Because let's be real, if Carly just walked away from Jason and everything, that would technically be best for her family. She could be out of the mob completely and not have to worry about anyone, but she wants to stick by Jason's side. While Jax and Carly were talking outside at the Metro Court, Britt and Jason were talking inside the restaurant, and Jason's like, I made a promise to you that I would be there for you no matter what, and that's not going to change just because I'm marrying Carly, and Britt, of course, is like, go to hell. One thing that actually baffles me is that it doesn't seem to occur to anybody in their life that Jason and Carly could be marrying each other for business sake. Like, no one's jumped to that conclusion, and it seems to be the most obvious one. Because of that, we get scenes of Carly talking to Britt at the hospital and making up some cockamamie story about how they had feelings for each other right after Sunny died and they admitted it, but it was too soon, and then everything happened between Jason and Cyrus, and Jason ended up in jail because of Peter, and when he got out, they admitted their feelings again and decided that they wanted to get married. I was so mad y'all like the fact that Carly did that she didn't need to do that anyone could have just gone and told Brit that they were getting married because of the business Jason didn't even do that to her either there was no reason at all that Carly needed to tell that to Brit make up some stupid story like that like the fact that they're not telling anybody at all that this marriage is for the business is hurting so many people unnecessarily oh Brit found out about Jason and Carly's marriage as well and she's completely heartbroken for her daughter because she knows that this could have been her last chance at happiness before Huntington's disease takes over her. I, for one, can't wait for Obrecht to confront Jason about it. Monica actually handled the news pretty well. I mean, she kind of looked at him like, oh, y'all are getting married. But she was also like, I know that Carly loves you and that you guys are completely loyal to each other, so I know that it would be okay, but she asks him if he's happy and Jason says yes. I don't think I believe him, but he says yes. Speaking of Monica, she might have a chance at love herself because Yuri, Brooklyn's bodyguard, actually seems to have a thing for Monica. Like, he was checking her out when she was leaving the mansion, and I'm totally here for it. Monica could use some loving after all these years, and Yuri is a hunk. Valentin was the one that picked up on it, by the way. Speaking of Valentin, though, he and Anna shared a kiss on the 4th of July, and of course, Anna regretted it, or she at least pretended to regret it, and kind of got out of there quickly. I know a lot of people are actually shipping Anna and Valentine. I'm personally not into it. I just, I feel like Valentine is such, he's so cocky, and that really bothers me. That doesn't, like, 
charm me at all. He always acts like he's so irresistible and that's just such a turn off for me personally. Be humble, know your place. Anna and Maxie were actually talking about Valentine as well. She brought up that they were stuck in a rainstorm in Pawtuck in that cabin and Maxie's like, ooh, alone with Valentine. And she, you know, she points out that people notice that there's an intensity between you two. And of course denies it, but you know, whatever. Speaking of Pawtuck, let's talk about our pal Austin. He is planning to move to Port Charles and he got a job at GH. He says that he has business in town and he wants to put some roots here as if he didn't already have roots in the first place, or at least people in his family did. I honestly can't figure out why they're prolonging this story. I mean, I feel like all the long-term fans have already figured out that he is Jimmy Lee Holt's son and any new fans are probably not gonna have any idea who he is anyway. I mean, Jimmy Lee Holt was only on for a couple years in the 80s and was a very obscure character to begin with and also, He's barely been mentioned in the last three decades, so it's it's like, why drag it out? Why drag it out? I mean, I guess there's a slight possibility that I'm wrong and that it's not Jimmy Lee Holt's son at all, but it just seems like all signs are pointing that way at this point. His interest in the Quartermain family, Anna seeming to know who his father is, it's all there, you know? Since we're already talking about the hospital, we might as well talk about Terry. She is still determined to become the new chief of staff. I actually really like that Terry is getting this storyline, but the thing is, I am torn because I feel so damn bad for Brit right now. I mean, her life is going to hell in a handbasket pretty quickly. She lost Jason to a total bitch. She's got Huntington's disease. If she loses her position as chief of staff, then it's strike three and she's gonna have a mental breakdown. I can feel it. Realistically, there doesn't seem to be a reason that they should drop Brit at this point as chief of staff. I mean, she's not doing a bad job. Yes, she was hired under some shady uh, circumstances, but she's been doing a good job. I mean, we know that she cares about the patients at GH and cares about people. She was livid watching people coming in with overdoses because of Cyrus. She did everything in her power to help Jason bring Cyrus down. She even went up to bat for Franco because of the doctor that didn't want to treat him because of all the rumors that were appearing in Peter's newspaper. Furthermore, the second that Cyrus was out of the hospital, she hired Elizabeth back full time and we know that Brit hates Elizabeth, but she didn't let that get in the way of her realization that she knows that Elizabeth is a good nurse. That's why I'm so torn. I mean, I really do think that Terry could be a great chief of staff as well. She's a good listener. She cares about patients and she touches base on the fact that she wants to make a difference for the transgender community in hospitals. Her reasoning is very admirable. I just think that Brit is not a horrible chief of staff, so she shouldn't be getting the boot. Terry was actually bringing this up to Portia and Portia wants to plan a girl's night out with her and Elizabeth and I would totally be here for it because if you guys have watched long enough, the girl's night out with the hospital staff was so fun to watch whenever they did it. Elizabeth probably will need a girl's night out because she's going to be stressed out for a little while. She and Finn were actually planning to go up to the roof and down to the basement where Peter's body is to move him out of the hospital but it turns out that the cameras in the stairwell are back on, so now there's no way for doing it. Guess I'll have to continue to rot for a while. Shame. So those were all the highlights of this week on General Hospital, unless you consider Mike enjoying the fireworks in Nixon Falls as a highlight. Seriously doubt it. Oh, but also Maxie is continuing to piss me off because she can't help herself but go over to the Q Mansion and check out baby Louise, and Monica is picking up on Maxie's unhealthy obsession with Brooklyn's baby. Like, I get why Maxie wants to see the baby as often as possible, but Brooklyn is actually really trying hard to allow that to happen in a way that doesn't seem suspicious for you. You're gonna root it for yourself, girl. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you liked it, give it a big ol' thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.